What's going on, Washington Football Nation? It's your guy, Rio, back with another episode of Rambling About Washington. Today, I got on Mr. Philip Martin McCauley, the notorious trademark squatter, if that's not an offensive name to be called, in the process of this Washington rebrand. Welcome to the show, Martin. Thanks, Rio. Thanks for having me. All right, so what exactly, like, when did you start this whole trademarking thing and what exactly is the end game or long-term goal with this thing? Okay. It started in the year 2014. I've, I have a business where I've been selling merchandise online um, for 15 years now. Mm -hmm. So then I'd had a profitable, successful online retail business. And then in 2014, I, uh, expanded and started uh, listing products for sale that were for fictional football team names like the Washington Warriors, Washington Americans, Washington Red-Tailed Hawks, uh, Washington Pigskins. Mm -hmm. And I got some registered in 2015 and it was covered in the Washington Post and on Fox. I was on TV. But then Nothing much happened after that until um, June 2020, when it sure looked like they were going to need to change the name. And I had a lot of names registered that people thought would make good names. So I wrote a letter to the NFL. I, I said, and the, the subject line was free trademarks. And I said, uh, I've got a lot of registered trademarks that might make good names for the Washington football team and you can have one for free and included on that list was my registered trademark for Washington football club. So, you know, they went with Washington football team. They could have changed one word and made it club and I would have given them the trademark. Uh, and if free trademarks is an oxymoron, if there needs to be some uh, compensation, then I suggested, well, make a charity contribution. Okay, so, all right, so how exactly does it, how, how, do, how do you go about registering and acquiring a trademark? Okay, the government agency that handles it is USPTO, United States Patent and Trademark Office, and they have an online system where anybody can go on and register a trademark. Uh, when submitting the application and signed electronically, the applicant is stating that they have a bona fide intent to use the, the trademark in commerce. So it's not like a domain name where somebody can just buy a domain and sit on it, hope somebody's going to need it. With a trademark, the applicant has to actually use the trademark before it can be registered. So I, I have some merchandise for sale online. I sell it on eBay. I've got Washington Wolves shirts, Washington Football Wolves shirts, shape-shifting wolves. And so I've got receipts. I, oh, I, I can show, yeah, I can, I've sold 400 shirts and caps uh, for all the different names that I have trademarked and 300 out of 400 are for wolves or some variant of wolves. So I, that just shows that, you know, wolves outsells every other possible name put together. Oh, yeah, and we're so, going to get to that in a second because I feel like yeah. Wolves should be the heavy contender for what the name is going to be. Not Red Wolves, Washington Wolves, just Wolves by itself. But Because yep. I was going through the USPTO <laughs> website because, you know, fans, we like to – we like to do this whole forensic um, Sherlock Holmes thing where we like to try to investigate. You own like every possible variation of each name that Washington has been linked to in the process. I've seen shape-shifting wolves, wolf commanders, space commanders. All, like, Is there a name that you do not own that Washington has been linked to? <laughs> yeah. Well, some people think it should be hogs. Uh, you know, maybe that's like one of the top five. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have anything hog related. Um, I did have pig skins at one point, but I voluntarily abandoned it just because there wasn't a big market for, for I pig skins. I wouldn't imagine so. <laughs> yeah, but the trademark office 
they never say or say what they mean by in use in commerce. They've never defined that. Mm -hmm. But I think it's safe to say if somebody sells three products in six years, that's token use. That wouldn't count. Um, somebody just gives away promotional products to friends and family. That wouldn't count. But so I kind of made my own definition of what's in use. And if I sold 10 units this year, then to me, that counts as being in use. Okay. So do you, um, do you own the trademark for Washington Commanders? I applied for Washington Wolf Commanders and Washington Space Commanders. I don't think that it would be easy to get Washington Commanders trademark because there's already a registered trademark for shirts with the name just plain Commanders. Okay. And a trademark applicant can't trademark the name of a city or state. So the application would have to say, uh, this is an application for Washington Commanders, and I am disclaiming ownership of the word Washington. Okay. So the trademark office is going to compare that to any registered trademark for Commanders, and there's one there that would be an obstacle. So I did not apply for Washington Commanders. I added Space or Wolves. Okay, so there's this leak, well, a leak of sort, if you want to call it that, a rumor uh, going around on Facebook that New Era is in the business of mass producing Washington commanders hats in a large quantity. Being that we're in the last phase of this rebrand thing and we're going to know something in the next couple months, is this a plant? Is this misdirection? Or is this just a non-story at all? Because I'm still with th that the name's going to be Wolves. I'm still pretty positive I feel like the name's going to be Washington Wolves. What would you think of that? I don't put a lot of weight on those rumors that it's going to be commanders. Um, I think unless you hear it from Jason Wright, it's just a rumor. And if you listen to what a trademark lawyer would say, that's reliable. But they're not going to uh, give an answer on what they think is going to happen. They'll give an answer of a lot of scenarios and they may comment on what scenario they think is likely. And then I would say the least credible person to listen to is somebody said, well, they heard this or some friend told them this, or they picked something up. And uh, those are just, those are just rumors. There's, there's no, uh, there's no uh, fact behind okay. those. And Rick Snyder the other day, he's, I, he's been kind of pushing this train for about a year now that Washington's going to have issues getting Washington Wolves because of the Minnesota team. That doesn't make sense to me. And he's been pushing this for quite some time. It's not as new of a story. It's just he reiterated it again the other day. Uh, do you think that that's an actual issue? Because I feel like this could be where misdirection is coming into play. Because I feel like Red Wolves has had so much momentum to social media and even on a lot of national platform, but they haven't mentioned the name Wolves by itself yet. And I feel like that's why it could be the ace in the hole for the team. And do you think Wolf, like what, what do you think the name's going to be? I think the name is going to be Wolves. I think by mentioning Red Wolves and calling Red Wolves uh, one of the eight finalists, uh, although I have a different opinion about that list of eight. I don't think that was list of finalists. It wasn't. Think, yeah, a lot of people interpreted that. Mm -hmm. So that, I think that's why people were saying Commanders, because of all those bad names, Commanders was like the least worst after Red Wolves. Yeah, I can like vouch for that, too, because I was on the making the brand thing and they showed us the names and stuff. I would say Commanders is, is, is in the mix, but yeah, so you can take it. Okay, so when an applicant applies for a trademark, uh, there are different parts to it. There's the name, maybe a logo too, or it could be just a name or a logo, and then the the class of goods or services. So the classes of goods and services that would be of interest to the football team are class 025, that's your clothing, and class 041, that's the class for football games. So they they could get a trademark for Washington Wolves, uh, Class 041, for football games. Uh, a, another pro team in a different sport uh, really has no, they have no reason to object to somebody in a different sport 
specifying so. they want that name for that sport. Mm -hmm. um, the more likely problem would be getting a trademark for clothing, uh, Class 025, because that, uh, you know, if somebody's already got a trademark for wolves' clothing, then that could be an obstacle. Okay, so we're now in December. They want to roll this name out probably sometime in February or January. Where, where where do you how long does it take to go about acquiring these trademarks or when it comes to like a billion dollar corporation like a national football league team like can they just like can they just like send everything out and then get the word out like because it feels like to me how does that word not get out if they're sending stuff out in december well there are two types of trademarks if you've seen when somebody lists a word that's trademark they either put a a little TM afterward after it, or there's a circle R. So circle R is a good one. That takes a year and a half to get after the first application. Circle, I mean not not circle. The just plain TM as a superscript uh, that can be used as soon as the the service or merchandise is put in the market. So somebody can get some protection by sort of claiming a name if they put the TM next to it, but it's not official until it's registered and gets they get to use a circle R. And once it has a circle R registered trademark, then the the customs office can intercept any uh, knockoffs that are trying to be imported. So that's the advantage of getting the, the registered trademark, uh, not just uh, preventing anybody else from from using that trademark and also uh, preventing uh, knockoffs, uh, being able to take action against anybody who's trying to use that trademark for goods and services. Okay. So does the team, if the team does go Washington wolves, would they have to contact you to acquire such trademark? No. Uh, every time in the last 89 years when they've changed the name, they've used one of my names without contacting me. Uh, Washington football team is the same as Washington football club. They never contacted me. They don't, no, they don't have to contact me. Okay. So when you were in the process of acquiring all these trademarks, you're saying you were doing so to try to facilitate an easier transition for the team? Or were you looking for were you looking for Snyder to cut you a check at some point? <laughs> well, um, a, a trademark applicant can't apply for a trademark thinking that somebody's going to cut them a check for it. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, an applicant can't just reserve a trademark um, hoping someone else is going to need it and then not use it because I was in the business of selling merchandise online. Mm -hmm. So this was just something I thought I had experience with and I thought there'd be a market for it. There is a market. Uh, people sort of vote for what name they would like for a fictional team name uh, based on the sales. They, you know, people like Washington Wolves. So they, so they they bought hundreds of Washington Wolf shirts. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah, the name's been in demand. Like like some people try to <clears throat> say, oh, it's just social media. No, the name has been buzzing. Some type of variation of Wolf has been buzzing for over a year straight. Any poll you look at, if the team was to do a Washington Wizards like survey where people would vote on the final names, Wolves would win by an astounding number. It's like the clear popular it's not just young people people think it's just kids in the younger demographic it's a popular name there's no canine representation in the nfl right now it's a bunch of birds and cats and i feel like it would be a good transition from what our predecessor name was but if you if you had any confidence in the name being washington wolves what would it be just a demand that came over the last year well there are a lot of reasons wolves is the best name this uh it's very marketable and not just to fans of the team. If, if the logo is cool, uh, people will buy the shirt. Uh, mm -hmm. I sell a lot in California and Texas. So it's not just fans who would like to see that be the name. I mean, people just think it's cool to buy a, a shirt that says wolves. Uh, and then, you know, the idea of an identity for the fans and the team being able to howl. Wolves are apex predators. You know, they, they hunt in packs. Uh, so they're just 
there's so many reasons why Wolves is so much better than any other name. And that's why every poll has them at 70, 80% or my merchandise sales are 70, 80% or Wolves. So that's all consistent. It's clearly okay. the, the best choice. So if the name ended up being Commanders, how do you think they would market that? Because it's just not nearly as exciting a thing to market. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming they would force feed the military theme, right? I think it would be uh, something that doesn't have an image of a person. I think they're getting away from using a person as a, mm -hmm. a mascot. And since it's a, a military rank, then they would, you know, it seems like, well, then are they talking about using a person who's a commander? Um, and, you know, that's a bad idea. They need to use an animal, not a person. Mm -hmm. um, and so I guess it would just be some kind of design you know like the dc yeah, or flag like, or something or like a shield and go like the knighthood it just doesn't yeah. seem like a very inspiring name change and i don't know i, I don't hate it but i don't ver like it very much and i don't love it wolves just seems like the knockout like the knockout option the clear-cut winner the fan favorite and They've been doing a lot of fiddling with the W that the team has been using for the last year. They don't even necessarily have to make it an actual wolf. They can have multiple variations of the logo, like teams like Chicago, the Chicago Bears do, where they have the C, they have the bear as an alternate logo and stuff like that. It just seems like a perfect fit. But I appreciate you for coming on with me today, Martin, man. I thank you because I think a lot of people – they hear your name attached to some of these trademarking things and they treat they, they treat you very infamously like <laughs> like you're a villain in the process like i'm gonna take all the names and washington can have none of them man i appreciate you for coming on with me today man thanks thanks for having me oh yeah and did you want to did you want to mention you could plug your site where you sell your merchandise or anything like that sure uh fans can go on ebay and look for Washington Red Wolves LLC. That's that's my company, and I've got a lot of shirts on there for sale. I, I'm pretty busy making shirts because I do it all myself. And uh, you know, like I I buy blank shirts and apply iron-on transfers and clothing tags to them, and I and I mail them. So if anybody wants to go on eBay and just search for Washington Wolves or Washington Shapeshifting Wolves, there they'll see uh, merchandise that they can buy and then I'll just make them a custom shirt when I get the order. Perfect. Perfect. So if you find, <laughs> if you get, if you know anything else, man, let us know. Cause we're thirsty. We're starving to find out what this new name of this team's going to be. But until next time, hell to the nameless soon to be named football team deuces. <laughs>